What's up YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Toy World Green Hornet purple version. Their version of a The Last Night movie World War II Bumblebee. So it disappeared very briefly in the movie, but he did appear as an old school car like this. It was more of like a silverish green, but this is a repaint done in a purple. So you get a kind of a cool repaint here. It is a German staff car type 320. I don't know. But kind of a cool looking vehicle. It got a lot of detail on this. So you got the yellow headlights here. You have a grill. It does feel like die cast metal there on the front or something. Got a bumper here with the silver paint. The wheels are painted with the white walls and the silver hubcaps. It says 283 here. There's some number back here. I don't know what that means. Nice spare tire over here. Inside you got seats, five different seats there, steering wheel, some dash gauges, cluster gauges in there, whatever. Pretty cool. Here's the back. Pretty clean overall for what it transforms into. You got rear tail lights and what can be perceived as a exhaust. Now there is some die cast pieces in there. But overall pretty good looking vehicle. It does roll on those wheels, although the clearance is pretty tight. He does come with some weapons here, so first of all you get these two guns which you can mount here on the sides. So right here behind this hinge, a little spot, you get them on there. Now if you want to also mount the hammer here that he gets, you can just pull this apart and these will mount onto here. So basically you get this tab slot it in here and then you can take that part and this will tab onto here right same for this one take the back part of the hammer here and there's a tab slot right there get that pegged in and then that will fit same spot on this side and now you have all those weapons stored basically you got some gatling guns on the side of this car that's pretty cool it's cool that you can store that. And overall, it's a nice looking vehicle. And of course, you do get one other accessory here, which is this kind of brick wall. I guess it's meant to be a road. So you can display him, you know, driving around on cobblestone. I don't know. And you can also come combine these together to make a scene. So if you get all these figures, they all come with these pieces, put them together and make a, a diorama. But for the purpose of this, you can put it on here and make it look like he's driving down a cobblestone road. And for size comparison, since I don't really have anything from this line to compare it to, I'm going to look at it here with the X Transbots version of Cliff Jumper. And this is a smaller vehicle, so this doesn't quite match up with the Masterpiece scale. It's kind of a smaller scale. I mean, all these Tour World, World War I, and World War II vehicles are kind of their own thing. So there you go for a sense of scale. And there we have Green Hornet in his robot mode. Actually really nice looking, but there are some issues, but you can see really nice weathering, kind of a brown and dirt color and rust color, kind of all throughout. These are loose, but you got the copper. I mean, it's everywhere. It's really well painted and detailed. Lots of little numbers all over the place. Here's the back. It does clean up pretty nicely. Uh, unfortunately though there are a lot of loose things on this. So these panels here and this is pretty much what I've found with most of these guys. These pin joints are just loose but these are loose here. The hands are kind of loose. These knee joints are really loose. You can kind of fake a better look if you push it down but it's still loose forward. But at least it doesn't flop backwards. If you have them straight up like this, he wants to fall down because there's nothing holding up those knees and they're just floppy. So I recommend if you have that problem, push them back. But I mean, he just has a lot of floppy stuff on him. Let's go over the articulation since we're looking at it anyway. The head is on a ball joint. Pretty nice looking head sculpt. You have the blue eyes there and really nice detail. You do get a face mask here, it just friction fits onto here. Yeah, it's not the best fit, but you can have that battle mask. And this is another thing that's loose. This front chest piece doesn't always stay, but there's that battle mask look. 
if you like that. Uh, but while we're here, we also get an alternate head. It's on a ball joint. I have had problems swapping these out before. So I don't want to break it. So I'm going to leave this guy and just show you the alternate head. So you can have the Bumblebee, Bumblebee movie head B, or you can have the Last Night Bumblebee head. Kind of have a choice there. And then this one also has a battle mask. Slightly different. But that looks good. And it's just on a ball joint. You can swap it out. I just don't want to risk breaking it because I did have a problem with the Toy World version of Starscream. The head just broke. So I'm not willing to risk it here. But you do get side to side. You rotate all the way around and it goes up and down. You have a rotation joint here at the shoulder. It's on a ball joint. So it gets up to there. It's a little bit hindered, but you can rotate it there around. Just do the way the shoulders are designed. You have a rotation here at the elbow. Signature to elbow gets you not even 90 degrees. This panel here likes to flop down. For the hands, you have a single pin that opens up to there. They are die cast and they go in and out. But like I said, that joint is kind of loose. You have a waist rotation here that it collides a little bit, but you get a little bit out of that. Uh, I don't think there's an ab crunch. Oh no, I guess you do have an ab crunch. If you undo this, you get an ab crunch there. Legs go up to there, back to there, but hindered by all this kibble. If you move this out of the way, you can probably get it further back. The legs are on a double joint, the knee on a double joint, but you still only get 90 degrees out of it just due to the way it's designed. And I've got a super loose joint there. You have a rotation at the thigh, but you can barely get it because of the way it's designed. If you move this out of the way, maybe you get a little bit more. Yeah, you get more. So you have to kind of move that seat out of the way to utilize that. And for the feet, you get in and out movement here. And you get back and forth. Nah, not really. If you move this out of the way, you can get it forward. As far as accessories, you can use the same weapons as we showed you in the vehicle mode. So if you take the axe, put it back together. By the way, this is nicely painted and detailed as well. Nice sculpt on that. This can be stored back here. <clears throat> There's a little tab slot right there. So you can hold that. Or you can put that in his hand. It's kind of a weird fit, but put the square part in where his hand goes. And you can hold that. You also get these guns, which you can use here. Now, you want to fold down these handles and then you can fit that into his fingers. It's kind of, a, again, a loose fit just due to the way it's designed. There is a tab, a peg on the inside of that, so that helps secure it. And of course, if you want to, you can take these and tab it onto something. Since it's got the little hook tab, you could probably put it, you know, kind of wherever, really. So final thoughts on the Toy World Green Hornet purple version. Let's start with the positives. I think this thing looks really cool in the vehicle mode. It's a very nicely detailed, lots of little sculpted details and paint, uh, weathered paint at that, so it just looks really good. There's also uh, some pretty nice weapons and accessories, nice guns here, the axe, alternate head, which is really nicely sculpted and painted, and the battle mask, all of that's really nice. I do like the look of the robot mode, but negatives wise, there are so many loose things on this. So this panel here, and everything's a pin joint, so you can't really tighten it, but this knee part here, this tab in chest, which just doesn't seem to stay. Um, I've, I've tried different configurations and just can't get it to, to lock in. Um, just little things like that, and this isn't new because the other Toy World last night figures that I've looked at had the same issue. They had issues kind of staying together, issues kind of articulating, quality issues. And if that's an indicator of what these are, you know, I'm not really interested in something that's going to fall apart right out of the box. Now, I watched a review from MGO and he didn't have as many loose joints as I have here. And maybe it's because this is a reissue or a repaint, but 
I since this is the third figure, I looked at the Star Scream, I looked at the Jetfire, and now this Bumblebee, and they all seem to have QC issues. I can't really recommend it because I don't know what you're going to get. I don't know if you're going to get a good version like Emo got, or you're going to get a loose version like mine. So it depends. If you're going to leave it in vehicle mode or leave it in robot mode and not transform it too many times, I think it's probably cool for display. All of these guys together, all the World War One and World War Two vehicles. If you want to transform it back and forth, I don't recommend it. That's it for today. Thanks to Dr. Diecast for sending this for review, and we'll see you next time.